in this video we're going to cover the flex grid system. Uh, the flex view is a type of view you can create when you create views in the ignition perspective module. Um, here is what we're going to try to recreate, not so much the content of this image here, but more so the layout and hopefully I can show you some useful tricks that you can use when you create when you use flex views. Let's go ahead and open our designer. Let me log in really quick. Open my test project. And once your designer is open, you want to go to the perspective module, uh, go to views uh, and select new view. So let me name this dashboard or something. And so you want to create a name and then for the important part here is when you create a new view, you want to choose your root container type as a flex container. Uh, I'm going to add a URL here. I'm going to call this admin. I already have one called dashboard. This was another video I made, but I decided it was too long. So I re-recorded the same, the same content. Let's go ahead and create this view. So again, you want to make sure you selected flex container here because you can't change it later after you create a view. Let's go ahead and resize this to look more like a regular 16.9 monitor. Okay, when you have your project open here, you want to go ahead and click your root container. If you have no other content on the view, uh, the root container will be selected by default. Um, so the first thing we want to do, let's go back to our image here. Uh, you, when you use flex views, you want to think of the layout in terms of rows and columns. So we can say to begin at the highest level, let me go ahead and draw uh, with the red color. So at the highest level, we can say this is our root container. This is what I just created. Uh, when you create a flex view, uh, or when you create a view and use a flex container, uh, this will be your root container. And then inside your root container, you have, you have two columns. So column one and then column two. All of this content here will be column two. Go back to our designer and in your perspective components, you want to search for flex container component. Let's drag it onto the screen. It's oriented as a column. So if we go back to our root container here in the project browser, you can see that the direction is column. You want to set this flex direction to be row. And then if you click this container, you can see that it's oriented up and down. Let's go ahead and set our grow and shrink to zero and set our basis. This basis is just uh, it sets a width um, of your container and it grows in the direction of your flex direction here. So you can see that when I changed it to 100 pixels, it was that wide. When I changed it to 200, it gets wider. And the grow and the shrink, um, what, that, what that means is that as your project grows in width or whichever direction you set your flex direction to, uh, if you set this grow to one, uh, it would also grow and then this basis would act like a min width property in CSS. Also, if your direction was set to column, it would act as a min height. At least that's what I found out as I used it. I'm not sure if those are the correct technical terms. So let's go ahead and set this to 200. And then in our flex, con in our root container, let's also go ahead and rename this. So when you have it selected, hit the F2 key, uh, type it flex nav, call it flex nav. Go ahead and select, deep select your root container again and drag on another flex container. Uh, this one we want to we want to make it grow to fill the rest of the of the view width. So if we go back to our image. This little nav takes up, I would say maybe a sixth of the screen width, and then the rest of it is taken up by this the content of this view which is what this is here. Let's set a background color for this one, for this um, flex container, background color. 
a quirk I found is if you type in background dash color and hit the tab key, um, this value doesn't lose focus. So then you can specify a color, something super light. Let's go F7, F7, F7. That should be a very light. Let me go ahead and set my background color here. I'm not sure what the problem is. Black, there we go. I'm not sure why it was acting that way. And then this one we can leave as white. Let's go ahead and save and open a session. Uh, we call this admin, I believe. A green close. So we can see that as we resize our screen here, it doesn't change width. Uh, this behavior is, it doesn't take it into account. Um, so it's not very responsive. As you can see, as I shrink it, my nav doesn't get any smaller. Uh, this might not be the behavior you want. You might want your nav to shrink into a a hamburger menu that collapses to the side once a, your screen gets a certain width but for this in this case I want to leave it as is um, so I want to keep it a set width and then so it doesn't grow or shrink as your screen size changes let's go ahead and look here so inside my first column here I have a lot of little components that grow in the column direction so my root container was grow was growing, um, or the flex direction direction was set to was set to row because it was growing from the left to the right. In my column one, I will set my flex direction direction to column uh, because it's growing from top to bottom. If you're grow if you want to grow from bottom to top, you can set column reverse. Likewise, if you want to grow from right to left, so in this direction here you can set row reverse. So that's a flex direction property. It's a CSS property as well. So let, let's go ahead and create this content here in the second column. So we have, we have uh, inside this column, we have five distinct rows that I can see. So here's a row one, row two, row three, four, and five. There are a couple approaches we can use um, when creating this, and it just depends what behavior we want. If we want, if this is a scrollable page and there's more content down below, we should probably set each of these heights or the basis for, of this, of each of these rows as static. And then so that we can, so, there, so that our page can be scrollable uh, if we want for example, row four to grow and the rest of them to stay static. We set one, two, three, and five um, with a basis and without grow and shrink or with grow and shrink turn to false and then set row four to grow and to shrink. So as you resize your window. So it just depends on what you want, but let's go ahead and create um, something simple that looks similar to this page, at least the layout does. So for our rows one and two, we just want to drag on. So let's go ahead and deep select this flex container. First of all, let's rename it as uh, flex content. Make sure it's deep selected. Drag your flex. As you can see, my direction is set to row. I don't want it set to row. I want it set to column. And then if I hit my flex container, oops. So I want this flex container to be set to column. And then when I choose this one, this one here, uh, this one will probably be set to row, but it doesn't matter in our case for now. So here's my first flex container. Remember I have five, so let me drag on four more. Three, four, five. So there, so my first row was about, I don't want it to grow into shrink, so I'll set both of these to false, and it was about 50 pixels. So because my flex direction of flex content is set to column, my basis will determine my flex height. If it was set to row, it would determine my flex width. It just takes a bit of playing around to get used to the terminology. So here my grow and shrink, I will also set to zero. This one was about 60 pixels high. 
So there we go. Let's set these background colors. Oh, so the quirk I was talking about earlier, if you type in, tap out background color, by, sorry, background dash color, and hit the tab key, you don't lose focus and you can type in your color right away. Let's do green. Uh, and then let's also set this color. So the quirk is if if you type in background color camel case and hit tab, you lose focus and then you have to double click here. So let's set this to blue. I just want to I just want uh, the different rows to be visible when we save and launch our session, so that we can see what the behavior is like. Uh, let's go back to our image. So the, the third row is about 100 pixels wide and it's a looks like notifications and that also looks like it's static but we can change the behavior so let's also set this to shrink zero set this to 100 pixels and then we can add this background color to oops To pink or something okay let's go ahead and skip row four because in our example we want it to grow and shrink let's go to row five um, set row five to about 300 pixels 300 pixels here and then let's also set a background color and color and uh, what's another color <laughs> I don't want to use red because red is very bright, but there you go. So this, the fourth column, let's assume we want this one to grow and to shrink. Maybe there's more cards we want to, that we hide by default, but if the page is tall enough or something, I don't know, whatever our requirement, whatever our requirements are, we can accomplish it with the flex. Most likely we can. So let's set this shrink to zero. Uh, Actually, I want to set both of these to one. I forgot I'm dealing with row four. So as you can see, I pushed the rest. Uh, I pushed this fifth row to the bottom. Let's go ahead and save and we'll go back to our browser and we will look at the behavior what happens when we resize. As you can see, my row here, since it's also set to shrink, it can shrink to zero here, but my, my other rows, rows one, two, three, and five, they don't shrink. I get this overflow in the Y direction so that my scroll bar appears so that all of the content in these rows is visible. No matter how small you make your browser, you just have to scroll. But this fourth row can shrink so that it's not visible. There you go. Let's also turn off, let's turn off shrink or let's turn on shrink and save again and see how it behaves. So when we shrink this, it just compresses this way. Um, let's actually look at this guy here. So this one is set to 200 pixels. Uh, oh, let me turn this off. So I was dealing with the wrong one. Let me turn this to zero. So my basis, um, won't allow this fourth row to be less than 200 pixels here. It's my min width or min height in this case. So let's go ahead and save and see that behavior. There you go. So my fourth row here is at least 200 pixels wide or high. And then again, the same scrollable behavior. Okay, so let's create the rest of the components here. I'm not going to worry about the nav because the nav doesn't have any further nesting. You can pretty much just add an image and then add your buttons with um, icons, your drop downs, your title, and then uh, an, an interesting something interesting. How to keep this name on the bottom might help one of you. So let me let me actually do this. Let me add a few sample components. Oops, let me undo. You have to deep select your container. Let me add, 
add an image and then go back to your flex nav. We want it to grow in the column direction, right? So there's your image container. Let's also set this background color to gray. So that way we can see here's our image container. This one, let's set our background color. Actually, let's not bother. Let's delete this. Uh, let's drag on a couple buttons. Button. Um, you want it to be deep selected. And then, so to keep this, the login status here, to keep this on the bottom, uh, a trick that I use is I make sure this flex nav is deep selected. I select a flex container component, drag it on, uh, I set the grow to one so that it fills the rest of the remaining space. I set my direction to column reverse. And then when I deep select this component and I want to add, say, another image, uh, when I drag it on, it stays at the bottom here. So let me change this background color. Uh, to oops. Um, F8, F8, F8. That should be a valid color. There we go. So let's go ahead and save and look at it, the behavior in the session. So as you resize your login info here, will stay at the bottom. And then if you go full screen, it still stays at the bottom. That's the behavior I wanted, uh, but if you want something else, you can just change the behavior to, to do exactly what you want it to do. So let's go ahead and add just sample components. We have a label, a button maybe, to row one. We want to set row one flex to grow or direction row, it's set correctly here. So let's maybe drag an icon. There we go. So we can see that it's growing in the right direction. Button, as well as row two. We also want it to, uh, to have a flex direction of row as well as row three. So row three, we can also drag some buttons. Row four as well, flex direction is row and as well as row five. Let's go back to our image here. And then you can fill out the content as you see fit. This video was more about the layout. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I found it pretty tricky to learn the layout of the flex nav. Uh, for the first few weeks that I used the perspective module. Uh, so hopefully this helps someone. It's a very ugly admin dashboard uh, compared to this one here. But uh, we covered the layout and that's what I set out to do. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you'd like to see a video in which we do create this dashboard along with content, for example, we can have system tags CPU, memory, utilization of uh, the ignition server, and then we can use some API calls to bring in other information from our company that we might want to see in one dashboard, uh, as well as an authentication module that we can use ignition's authentication, um, and then other links. Uh, if you'd like to see a video in which we create that, uh, let me know in the comments and I can try to make a few videos and then make it more of a tutorial step-by-step uh, step, how to create something like that. That would be a pretty complicated project. It might take a little while, so it might be more than a few videos. But if you're interested, let me know. Otherwise, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that saved you some time. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in another video.